basic concept. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, before we begin, I wanted to thank all of you for watching for all the recent support and engagement that you brought to my channel. We are just past the thousand subscriber mark as of this recording. So thanks again for all your support and let's continue to grow this channel because without you, the person watching, there is no channel. With that said, in this video, I'll be talking about the differences between buying a house and renting a house and which one is better based on your financial situation. And I'll share my opinion on why buying a house isn't always the best option. Now the key word there is always. Let's start with the basic argument that buying a house is better because you get to keep the equity. While I do agree with that general statement, there are some things you should consider before making this huge and life-changing decision. We'll go over some uh, pros and cons of buying versus renting. When you're buying a house, you are keeping the equity. So as you're making the payments, the house value is going up simultaneously as well. And whatever you've paid off so far, in turn, is your equity built into the property. Additionally, when you have a 30-year fixed mortgage, your payments stay the exact same, whether it's month one or the very last month and the very last payment for your mortgage. And if you're buying a house currently, the uh, mortgage loan rates are very, very cheap. They're barely above the inflation rate. So you're almost getting the money basically for free. Also, when you're buying the house, you get a little bit of a tax break based on how you file your taxes. Other pros would be uh, being able to uh, modify your place or paint it a different color and not have to deal with random inspection. On the other side of that, uh, when you are buying a house, you're responsible for every expense that comes through on it, whether it's your uh, AC breaking down, if your house needs new paint, new roofing, all of that comes out of your pocket instead of your landlord. And there might be additional utilities that you're going to be responsible for as well, such as water, trash, city services, and sewage would all come out of your pocket as well. And generally speaking, when you're buying a house, you'd want to add an additional 10 to 15% to your mortgage payment to cover any outstanding expenses that might come up, like repairs and maintenance and so on. The pros and cons of renting are a little bit similar, but a little bit easier to describe. Renting a house or an apartment is basically the opposite. You're not responsible for any repairs, upkeeps, or maintenance. Your landlord takes care of that. And uh, you might have some utilities included in that as well, depending on the state that you live in. You might have water, sewage, trash, and services like that would be included in that. Some places even include internet and electricity. The other benefit of renting would be not having to pay any taxes on um, your property. Let's crunch some numbers and see which one actually is better based on three different scenarios. So scenario one, you live in an area where buying a house is is cheaper than renting a house. For example, if your rent is $2,000 for a two-bedroom apartment and you can get a house for $1,600 a month, this would be a good idea because even after you include some maintenance and upkeep, it should still be cheaper than renting. And you get to keep the equity and have other benefits that are listed above. Not to mention that if you don't have any maintenance and upkeep, that additional $400 you could be investing for a really large sum of money at retirement. Scenario number two would be where you're purchasing the house at $2,300 a month and you can barely afford it. Now that's a bad idea because if anything comes up, you may not be able to afford it and might have to go into debt to cover any repairs or upkeep. Additionally, if you put that extra $300 into a stock market at approximately 8% return, you would net a little over $400,000 after 30 years. So again, in that scenario, renting would be the better idea based on your financial situation. Now, if you can't afford the extra three to $500 a month uh, without any issue, then that's a different case as well. And finally, scenario number three, which is the hardest one in my opinion, is where the mortgage is the same as your rent. This is the hardest one because very situational and depends on your income and your uh, financial stability. If you are in a good financial stance and able to afford emergencies, then this will be fine. But again, just realize that those emergencies are going to be coming out of your own pocket unless you have an emergency fund. In all of these scenarios, what I would recommend is the 28% rule that most financial advisors have. Basically saying that your house should not cost you more than 28% of your net income. Not before taxes, but after taxes. So what you take home should be less than 28%. So if you're trying to buy a $2,000 house, your monthly take home should be $6,000 or more. My point with this video is to bring awareness that, that buying a house for residential use is, an, is not an asset, it's a liability. Everybody thinks that when you're buying a house, it's an investment. It's really not. And that's a propaganda that the bank started. 
Think about it, the banks benefit the most from you buying a house from all the interest that they collect from you. Whether you're able to afford the house or not, the bank benefits regardless. For example, if you make your payments on time and you continue to do so for the next 30 years, you get to keep the house, which is awesome, but the bank also charges you a huge amount of interest for lending you the money. For a $300,000 house um, at a current market rate, you'd be paying about $450,000 or $460,000 at the end of that. So that's about $170,000 or $180,000 in interest that you're paying to the bank for letting you borrow money for 30 years. And for some reason, if you're not able to make your payments or if you miss a bunch of payments, the bank takes the house back, resells it at market value, getting their money back, but also keeps the money that you've already paid in. So if you pay them for a year or two, that's free money for them on top of getting their money back from reselling the house. Now this is the same reason that you see a lot of new advertisements from, especially from Quicken Loans and other mortgage lenders, um, encouraging people to do it for a 15 year term instead of a 30 year term. Well, think about it this way. Um, they want their money twice as fast. They will take a little bit of a pay cut from the interest that they'll collect. But after the 15 years, they can relend that money to somebody else and get another amount of interest from that one. So essentially doubling their money by encouraging you to pay it off earlier. And some final thoughts. So when you're ready to buy the house, you should be the one deciding whether you're ready or not. Not some bank advertising it or somebody pressuring you to do so. You should be financially aware of your situation and know what you can afford. So again, going back to that scenario, if you're buying a house that has a $2,000 monthly payment on it, make sure that your income, your household income, is $6,000 take home after taxes. This way you're not uh, stressing over your payments and uh, there's less of a chance of you missing payments because you'll have a little bit of a, a surplus. And just because the bank says that you can afford it doesn't mean that you should. So once again, you should buy a house when you're ready, not when the societal pressure tells you to, to do so or when the bank tells you that you're ready to afford it. So how can you tell when you're ready to purchase a house? First, make sure you have a good credit score so you can afford a decent loan amount. Second would be have enough down payment to be able to offset any recommendation or requirements for PMI which is private mortgage insurance. And finally, ensure that you have enough of an emergency fund to cover any expenses that may come up from owning the house. And that's gonna do it for this particular video. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Leave a like if you found this information helpful. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos on personal finance and money. And as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.